So they can recreate what you look like from your DNA? Holy. It was the end of summer when tragedy would strike the Flying G Ranch Girl Scout camp. Oh God, if it's a Margaret Girl Scout Peggy camp, that's already scary enough. was a 16 year old Girl Scout aide at the time. 16 year old Girl Scout. That's, it's so young. It's so sad when it's like the younger ones. The night of the crime was August 18th, I love these 1963. Videos. I can just put them on my TV and then just close my eyes and listen to it. You know what I mean? Obviously there's like visuals that go with it, but I can just sit there and just listen to the guy's voice. Sometime during the night, Margaret's tent mate, Claudia Schride, made her way to the infirmary. She claimed to have left the tent with Margaret still sleeping inside. When Claudia returned, she apparently found Margaret dead in her sleeping bag. How? Was she stabbed? Witnesses say there were no obvious signs of trauma okay, no. and they assumed Margaret had simply died of natural causes. R no trauma and then they just died Jefferson in County the forest? Police what the discovered heck? After some investigation, Jefferson County Police discovered Margaret's underwear and leotard had been ripped Oof. and markings on her neck. They even found some skin under her fingernails, which led them to believe she had been murdered. I mean, skin of the fingernails, that's very, I mean, if it's skin of somebody else, that's definitely, there was a struggle. I don't understand why it took time for them to realize that she might have been assaulted. Because I think at first they said, oh, she might have died of natural causes. And then they realized later that there was more to it. So I think that was like, bad police work. So we've recently gone over some unsolved mysteries here on React, but this time we wanted to take a look at some true crimes that were solved in 2020. Wow, okay, cool. At the crime scene, there was DNA left under Margaret's fingernails, but at the time they were not able to match it to a suspect. But recent advancements in DNA have led investigators to find people who might be related to the suspect and narrow their search. Oh, wow. Investigators found familial DNA in a public database and they were able to confirm that James Raymond Taylor, a local team TV repairman at the time as a suspect after 56 years. Dang, that's a whole case for 56 years. That's crazy. And then there's no statute of limitation against murder. So like that guy can still go to jail against that. Unfortunately, Taylor has not been seen since 1976 and he would be around 80 years old now. So if anybody watching at home has any information on James Taylor, they are urged to call the Jefferson County Sheriff's tip line. So he just straight up disappeared. So that was like a double whammy there because they know who did it, but they haven't found him. That's really creepy. Ugh. This is the oldest case that has been solved with DNA evidence. Well, thank God it's the future and we're able to make stuff like that. That family has been probably speculating what happened for 57 years now. And the fact that they finally have a sense of closure this year, I would have felt relieved. On the 25th of June, 2010, 47 year old Bonnie Woodward was an East Alton, Illinois resident, mother and cancer survivor. She'd worked at the Unice Smith Nursing Home, located in Alton for over 27 years. Right on. Her shift ended at 3 p.m. when she walked out to a red Chevy Avalanche truck, which was sitting in the nursing home parking lot. She jumped into the truck and wound the windows down. A man was seen in the parking lot by co-workers half an hour prior to Bonnie exiting hmm. the building. He'd been driving a silver or grey 2000 to 2005 Chevy Malibu and was smoking a cigarette. He walked over to Bonnie in her truck and a heated exchange followed according to a witness. Okay. She was then seen entering the car with him oh. and they left together. Yeah, I wouldn't Bonnie's do that. truck was left abandoned and unlocked, but no personal items were left behind. That's really weird. Why she leave her door unlocked and everything, but get in the car and they drove away? It's crazy to me how someone could be coerced into a situation in which they would die. There's a heated argument and then homegirl just gets in the car. Willingly. Bonnie vanished that day and was never seen again. It's so At creepy the stuff like this can happen. Bonnie was a mother to two sons and had a 17 year old stepdaughter named Heather Woodward on the 3rd of July 2010. Heather oh, this was 10 years ago? She'd okay. been staying with Roger and Monica Carroll. Investigators then discovered that Roger drove a silver Malibu, which resembled the description okay. of the unknown man seen in the parking lot. Okay, so she, a so she knew the person. property was conducted with the assistance what of the... cadaver dogs but no sign of Bonnie was found. 
Yeah, definitely. It sounds a little more like they kind of have them, right? Like, same model of the car and everything. Damn, a cancer survivor? And then you have to go through that? That's crazy. Even though there was no evidence to convict Roger Carroll for Bonnie Woodward's murder, recently an unlikely witness spoke to police to help convict him of his crime. His own son. Oh, wow. Oh, so his own son ratted him out. He said when he was just 16, mm -hmm. he and his father, Roger, left a vacation early and they passed Bonnie's work. Roger happened to make a comment that he was glad she was working when he saw her car. Interesting. Roger apparently went back to Bonnie's work and mm -hmm. told her that her stepdaughter was at his house. Okay. I get like seeing the daughter, but like, why would you go to like a friend of a friend? Like you don't really know that person very well. The son said he later saw his father dragging a body across the yard and was instructed to start a fire to burn her remains and later clean up the ashes. Wow, he told his 16 year old son to do that. That. Roger Carroll was then arrested yeah. and was sentenced to 65 yeah. years for the murder of Bonnie Woodward. Wow, these are really sad stories. Morality will come out. It ate at this kid for 10 years. You know what I mean? At 26 years old, this guy's like, I can't sit by any longer. You murdered somebody. And it took him years, man. It took him to be an adult, like an actual adult, to be like, I gotta speak up, I have to. As a kid, I couldn't because I, I was just a kid then, but now it's like I have to. That's insane. James Essel was a loving father and husband. He owned the Sugar Loaf Mountain Market convenience store. Aw, it looks like a cute In little March homie market. James's body was found laying behind the counter. He was stabbed 29 times. Ooh, 29 times, jeez, that's hate. And he had fought hard for his life since the suspect's blood was also found at a crime scene. Oh, he was defending himself. Police sent her DNA samples they had collected. 1992 to 2017, that's a long time. Was able to make two images. Oh, interesting. One of how the suspect might have looked like in 1992 and what he might look like in 2017. Oh, wow, that's so good, that's cool. So they can recreate what you look like from your DNA? Holy. Unfortunately, did not help and police decided to focus on genetic genealogy to solve this case. Okay, I do remember hearing that if a person is killed the way that he was killed, it's usually a crime of passion, or I guess maybe they had a psychological problem, but I think maybe it was someone he knew. To help find James Essel's killer, authorities went to genetic genealogy to find family members of a suspect. And in January, 2020, they were able to narrow down their search to one man named Hans Hewitz. In February, police collected DNA from Hans, which matched the DNA left at the scene of James Essel's attack. Wow. Two days later, when police attempted to arrest him, he took out a firearm, mm -hmm. which he would not put down, and was shot and mm -hmm. killed by police. Oh. Essel's family said that they were relieved that the case had finally been solved after 30 years, but they were disappointed that Essel didn't get the justice he deserved. Yeah, honestly, like, I'd be disappointed too if I was a family. You murdered somebody, you took someone's life from them, and then now it's like you you got the easy way out. I feel like at least that way you know for sure that like he's not here to do that anymore to anyone else on this planet. He fought for his life, left blood, and because of that, they were able to get the guy, you know? So they should be more focused on that and the fact that they were able to catch him because of that, you know? I feel like that's more important. That happened this year, jeez. While coronavirus is going on and I'm quarantined in my apartment, some dude is getting caught for a crime he did 30 years ago. Holy sh Thanks for watching this episode of Adult React. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. What's the craziest solved case that you've heard of? Let us know down in the comments. Hey everyone, Lauren Producer here on React. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. What do you hope gets solved in 2021? Let us know down in the comments and let's all cross our fingers. Bye.